Hey, so this video is something a little unusual. It's not something really intended to be something that I would necessarily recommend for anybody else. It's kind of unique to me right now. So for those of you who have been watching, you know that I am not only an Enochian practitioner, but also a Buddhist practitioner, specifically Vajrayana Buddhism. And am I the greatest practice, practitioner of each of all time? No, <laughs> definitely not. So, but nonetheless, I've been guided toward this path. And it's a little interesting. You know, there's different foundational cosmologies to each. And for the most part, I navigate it by taking a pantheist, or maybe a sort of blended pantheist, panentheist, perspective on those two. And it's been interesting. And I'm really making this video to sort of let you know, if you're not familiar with how certain people who may have a practice that they don't talk about, what that can look like. <laughs> because I think that if you reach maybe sort of an intermediate stage to an advanced stage, you might hear one magician talking to another about it and get realize that there's something pretty profound that's going on, but they just don't talk about it because they're in a three-dimensional world. So, and that's actually, that metaphor of a dimensionality is something I'm going to come to again and again. So I just wanted to show this really quick axis in case you're not as into geometry as I am. So. This is your basic kind of Cartesian coordinate system named after by the great Rene Descartes. So here we have basically, this is used in geometry a lot. It helps people visualize. We have an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. So my hand's getting bigger and getting smaller. No, it's not. It's actually just getting closer and farther away from the camera, which is obvious, but um, that's the, what the Z axis in, is intended to show. And then I've added in this, on this dashed line, a W axis. Now, the reason I do that is partly to help us think of, in terms of, I'm not necessarily saying that what spirituality is, it can be boiled down to a hidden mathematical dimension. And if we only can discover that and understand it, then that's it. It's, that's the thing. And the, real, the truth is, I don't know. I just know that my experiences have confirmed for me that there is something else there. And dimensionality is one interesting way of thinking about it. So I was having a good conversation with my friend Michael about this. And what I said is that it's like I have a bunch of different dimensions coming at me. And what do I mean by that? So obviously Enochian in and of itself, you could probably say, okay, that is something with a lot of different dimensions, which it really is, right? But if you were to simplify it <laughs> into one, into an idea, you could say, this is something that sort of, if you get into Enochian, you can travel along this path and then a big world opens up to you. And I'm not, I'm going to use the cliche here, but you know, if you had 2D space and then a ball sort of came down through, passed through it and then out again, it would look to the beings were there like that, like a circle appeared, it got bigger and it got smaller and then it disappeared. Okay. So I'm bringing this up to let you know that there are ways that we use metaphor that may or may not be completely accurate, but nonetheless do get the job done in terms of us understanding spirituality. So Enochian could be considered one of those, and obviously I really am simplifying. Enochian is a very complex system full of many dimensions, but if you were to simplify it for the purposes of conversation, you could say that that's like, that is a certain vector coming at, if, if we're going to be self-centered here, you know, <clears throat> coming at the individual, right? The individual heart. And in my case, you know, it's coming from whichever direction, but it's it's well integrated, right? So that could be considered one vector of spirituality, for lack of a better term. 
another vector of spirituality I would hold very close. And again, this is also extraordinarily complicated. I am very much simplifying here for the purpose of conversation would be Vajrayana Buddhism. And <clears throat> the approaches, the cosmologies of those two systems are pretty different. One is definitely from a Christian magical perspective, which itself has different, a, a history of different angels and understandings of Christ consciousness or what the what Jesus Christ is, who he was, and all of that coming along with a parallel Judaism tradition and from which also came the Islamic tradition. So there's a lot there. <laughs> And Buddhist cosmology tradition came from a completely different source. It came from a Vedic tradition that has since continued in parallel and that has a, a deep understanding of various spirits that some of whom are very much shared across the Hindu and Buddhist cosmologies or systems or however you want to put it. But I found both of them, both of these traditions, Vajrayana Buddhism and Enochian magic, pretty helpful, both pretty powerful too. And so both of them are kind of coming at my heart and my heart that I try to keep soft and open, as well as, you know, my mind to be the, the tool of my heart. I find it pretty, I find both of them very valid and they both resonate very much with the heart. And so that's important. And meanwhile, that in addition to my mundane life and all the different dimensions of that, personal, professional, etc., there's a lot to honor. And I really do like that phrase of there's a lot to honor. There is a lot to honor when it comes to our lives, our hearts, our goals, our hopes, and our fears. There's a lot to honor about ourselves. So... Okay, so for those of you who know me, I am working on Ininokin Mandala. That's just, there's sort of a metaphorical pin in it right now because there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on in my life and the, the divine and the angels have decided to give me a reprieve and just let me just work on the rest of my life stuff. But nonetheless, I try to keep up my practices and occasionally ask for something more often than occasionally. Um, so the thing that I found was that it's difficult for me to, to just deal with a given level of spirit and not the other one, but I really like this idea of reconciling them. Okay, so... For me, Vajrayana Buddhism is something that it's very important to me, as is Enochian. I don't want to let either of those die on the vine. I really want to. I'm probably more advanced in Enochian than in Buddhism. I really need to be more involved with the Sangha and just really try to develop. But at the same time, there's this big array of spirits. Uh, you got a bunch hundreds, thousands of Enochian angels, and there's also hundreds, probably you could say thousands of Buddhists, and you know probably millions, depending on which cosmology, which sutra you're reading, of Buddhist spirits. All of them are important to me, okay? All of them. Now, I'll just speak briefly about Vajrayana Buddhism just because that's the thing that I've been practicing. So the main practice of that, for those of you who are Westerners, may not have had as much exposure, is that you are working with entities, specifically Yidams, who may be either a Dhaka or a Dakini, who you visualize yourself in the form as. And why do you do that? You do that from the, you do the, the technique is that you do it from a heart of bodhicitta, 
really wishing that all sentient beings can become Buddhas and free of suffering and thereby, you know, thereby have a better time, <laughs> have the best time, the best possible time. So you do that because you care and you love, right? Uh, but also more fundamentally, because that's the true nature of the mind, they would say. <clears throat> so in so doing, there are different qualities that you can get from that. And there's a certain flavor, I'm just going to say, to each of those. So, for example, with the deity Tara, she is very much an entity who will definitely help you feel loved, cared for. If you work with her, if you are reciting her mantra, she's extraordinarily popular. And she is said to have 21 emanations, and each of these emanations can do various things from you, but it's all Tara, right? And there's probably more than 21 because there are different traditions and each of them, each of them varies slightly. So, so let's say you're working with her and then each one of these is bringing out, oh, okay, there's a certain thing here. There's a certain thing here in the heart that she is landing on if you are working with one emanation versus another. For example, the emanation Rabjima is very much about peace and helping you feel more peaceful versus something, another emanation who may be more about helping you find prosperity or helping you be free of evils writ large, you know, and evils doesn't mean need to be capital E evil. It could just be bad things, bad vibes, whatever the case may be. So there's that. And it's a lot like Enochian, right? You, you could ask this angel to help you with medicine. You can help this, ask this angel to help you with golden precious stones. You can ask this angel to help you with transformation, this one to help you with transportation. So all of these different angels do different things. But in me and my pantheist, panentheistic view or model, I basically pretty much see all of them as integrated into the divine, into the whole. If you watched my previous video, I talk about how humans and all sentient beings suffer from this part whole paradox where we know that we're part of a whole, but we don't always have that consciousness right first and foremost. And why is that? Buddhism would argue there's obscurations from the pure luminous mind and Buddha nature that we all share and that we are all taking partaking in. So, okay, so why am I, what's the big wind up here? What's the big thing that I'm leading to? Well, with each of these different emanations of Tara and these relationships that I've really built with different angels and Yadams and so on and so forth, I realized that they're all kind of coming in at a different angle, which is fine, but I noticed that there it's it's almost like if you think of a seesaw or any kind of lever where there's only one person on the other, two people on the end of the seesaw instead of one on each side. And you need somebody else on the other side to balance it out and feel like, okay, this is where I need to go. My friend Cody, you can check him out at unslop.com, U-N-S-L-O-P.com. He talks about coming in to our realizations with a skew. And there's nothing wrong with that. We are all individuals who are biased, who have our own perspective on the world. And we are coming in to this world and interacting this world with our own unique partness, our version of ourselves as a part of the whole. And if we try to destroy our own individuality, we are really trying to deny ourselves and our own nature and, you know, you're not really going to have a good time when you do that. So 
Okay, so what I'm describing here is some imbalance. I'm just a personal perceived imbalance of like, okay, I've got this thing out here. I've got this interest in UAPs and entities that way. I've got these particular brands of angels here. And by the way, Enochian is just one system. I would say that another system of angels might be um, something from, let's say, Celestial Angel Magic. I think his name is Corwin Hargrove. Shout out to you who had lunar angels who come in and interact with the heart and you can request various mundane things or wisdom or whatever the case may be. So that's coming in from another angle and this other tradition of the Shem Ham Forash angels and all of the, the beings and spirits who, with whom we interact, including ancestors, and one of whom I'm very relatively close to right now is my late stepfather, who I can still feel a little bit of his of his influence is it like direct is it constant no it's not but if i think of them you know i can feel that connection to him okay it's a very much embodied feeling so that's why it's not something that i look at as as misleading although the body can mislead but that's a whole other topic so for whatever reason though with all of these beings and spirits there's there's a wobble but there's also this feeling of imbalance so, <laughs> what do you do about that, right? And what I've come to realize is that I need to work with something else. And I've been following my intuition as far as this goes. I didn't make a formal prayer about that, but regardless, the divine sent it to me. Of In terms of a being or a set of beings who could untwist everything so that everything is more balanced along a, a central point okay now what did this appear like for me the being who emerged was mahakala who is a dharma protector known as a dharma pala if you are if you are into the different kinds of buddhist entities there are so I work, I've been working, starting to work with Mahakala. So why would a Dharma protector, somebody who's out there protecting the, protecting Buddhism, specifically the forms of Buddhism that are more Vajrayana in scope and coming out of Tibet originally? Well, I think the reason why he is able to not only balance Buddhism, but also all of these other entities into a coherent whole and keep everything balanced and then allow for the flowering and the remainder, the final transmissions that I'm getting, including a, an Enochian table, including a uh, the rest of the Enochian 12D mandala. It turns out that I needed this. I needed to have something that could balance and then allow for this additional dimension to come up. But right now I'm too imbalanced. So why would he be able to do that? Well, if you are an, an entity whose job it is to protect a series of teachings, then you need to be able to work with and interact with and manipulate the physical world to a large degree from all of these other traditions who may be using their own entities in a not so helpful way. Mahakala can come in and interface with those other entities and say, look, you know, I know that this person is very motivated and they may be asking you to do this and that and the other thing, but don't. Or do this other thing that helps them feel like they are successful when they actually are not. And here are all the reasons why. And he needs to be able to have the influence to do that. Okay. So that's the general, my general understanding of why Mahakala is coming in with me, not because there's a need for a Dharma protector, but he's actually a balancer and allows and is able to sort of sit on the other end of all of these different seesaws at once and level everything out. Will that completely end my own personal bias and skews? Probably not, but it will definitely moderate it. Okay. So that's what's going on there. Now, the reason I'm bringing all of this up is to say, is to just let you know when you're dealing with a spirit, an, an experienced magician who's talking about their own practice, 
you know, first of all, you've done a great job. You, ha you have some magical power in and of yourself to get them to talk. But just to let you know that people who are, who are engaging in this work, you know, there may be, you, you know, for those of you who may be so inclined, you may say, well, this is more like, this is an internal drama. And I would say, not really. Uh, there, yes, in the sense that it's something that a person is going through, and it's something that they're not talking about, but really it's a very complicated kind of work that somebody can do. And there's all different kinds of things that people can do, okay? If you are giving, if you are a guru, let's say, you are constantly evaluating where other people are in their spiritual development, okay? If you are working with a certain set of beings and certain information comes through for whatever reason, then you are you're looking at something with with a fairly personal set of spirits and beings that are that are there for you, okay? And so, in terms of like working across different pantheons or different groups of spirits or whatever it's different right and so for whatever reason that's what i've been called to i haven't been called to only one tradition only thing i've been called to multiple ones and who knows i may integrate more but the point is is that if you get into spirituality and magic and all of that or or any of those you know anything along those lines you wind up having a unique experience that is often very difficult to talk about, but it is not any less important. In fact, it's it's very important because it is what you've been called to. So I'm raising all of this just to say that this is what it can be like after a while. And there may be a lot of people, like, like I'm in my 40s, I'm not going to tell you how, how late into my 40s I am. I'm in my 40s. And you can imagine, like, this is me after a good 25 years of spiritual practice, searching, etc. I've really only hit my jam, my, my, my peak, my most productive years in the last, I'd say, two or three, right? And I've been doing Enochian heavily and doing the Holy Guardian angel work, you know, which I would say is like when I did, made that conscious effort to really step things up since 2017. So just to let you know that now, now the reason I'm bringing that up is like a not look at me instead, consider other people in your life who may have a very deep spiritual practice and try to ask them about, about it if they're open to it and willing to do that. And you might discover that they have very interesting things to say that suddenly you it will open your mind up in terms and give you ideas about where you might be going someday. Now, you don't want to jump ahead of yourself and do all that. But if you're at that stage where you're relatively experienced, maybe you're taking on some pretty uh, important spiritual or ordeals for yourself, if you're really working on opening, opening yourself up, see where that can lead you, right? It doesn't have to be ordeal after ordeal after ordeal. It doesn't have to be. Me, I did a uh, Jebba Fall in 2019. I'm probably going to do uh, a different version of that next year, but I haven't had the big, the big ritual, right? The big thing since then. I've had another one that was like, important. It was a 19 day ritual. It wasn't 49, but it was not as, it was not as heavily intense. Okay. Or, you know, taking it back further, it wasn't as intense as the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel rituals that I was doing. So just have some curiosity, chat with other people. And even even maybe somebody more traditional, right? Oh, he's doing a magic channel, but you know, is he telling us just to get into whatever? Just talk. And I'd be curious in the comments to let you know either to figure out and listen to what sorry, English this morning. 
I'd be curious as to what either your experiences are or what you have learned from other people who are also engaging in the path because everybody's unique and it's all kind of interesting, isn't it? And it gives us ideas to collaborate or not collaborate, you know, our own personal thing or to get a more collaborative uh, practice going. I tend to be solitary, but that's partly because I know exactly where I want to go, which is a little arrogant. And it's one of the, and that potential for arrogance is one of the reasons why I do try to work with other folks um, when I can, or at least talk shop as it were with other folks. So anyway, that's all I had for you this morning, this and the other video, but just wanted to, to throw that out there as a potential topic of conversation and a thing to think about as you progress, because it's not all just, oh, I need to take another mushroom trip, or oh, I need to go into this cave and do blah, blah, blah. You can wind up having a relatively grounded life in which you are still searching, exploring, and discovering new things that are working for you. So, okay, I've gone on at length, another half hour video, I need to stop making these, but I really felt called to just try to to show you, at least from my experience, what spirituality, spirituality can look like and how it can develop. And I'm not saying to develop my, like me, I'm saying think about how you might like to develop and see where that takes you. And I don't know, I just wanted to share my experience. <laughs> All right. Love you all. I'll talk to you later. Bye.